myself, Dea Hania and Tara Brady to you all. Today we will be performing Act 3, Scene 2 from A Midsummer's Night's Dream. I'll be playing the role of the beleaguered Helena. And I play the role of the vicious Hermia. <laughs> this scene is a comedy of errors because of a complete misunderstanding. Both Hermia and Helena find themselves in the forest outside of Athens with Demetrius and Lysander who have previously sworn undying love for Hermia. But now, having had love potion put on their eyes, find themselves instead in love with Helena, much to the consternation and amazement of both girls. In this scene, I'm berating Helena for what I see as unloyal and deceitful behaviour. I'm angry as I think she has put, she has, she has put a mean joke on me by setting Lysander against me. At first, I think it could possibly be a joke, but when Lysander defends Helena and sticks up for her, I then begin to challenge her. And so, so both, both characters begin, begin a war, war of words. words. I think that Helena's objective is twofold in this scene. One is to reassure Hermia that she's not trying to take Lysander away from her, and two, to protect herself from Hermia's growing aggression and feistiness. Hermia is completely different to Helena, both physically and emotionally. My, my goal for this scene is to try, is try and find out what is happening, and then later try to punish Helena for what I see as disloyalty to our friendship. However, all's well that ends well, and our ha characters are happily reunited. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed our speech. <laughs> your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems you How? scorn me. Have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face, and meet your other love, Demetrius, who even but now despurned me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates, and wherefore doth Lysander deny your love, so rich within his soul, and tender me, forsooth, affection, but by your setting on, by your consent, what though I be not so in grace as you, so hung upon with love, so fortunate, but miserable most to love and loved, this you should pity rather than despise. I understand not what you mean by this. Oh me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love, what, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine eye faith, have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you puppet! What so? I that way goes the game! Now I see she hath made compare between our statues! She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him! And so high in his esteem, because I'm so dwarfish low. How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak! How low am I? But my nails can reach under thine eyes! I pray that you mock me, gentlemen. Let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I'm no gift to tall and shrewishness. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think because she's something lower than myself that I can manage. Lower! Hark again! Oh, good You see how simple and how fond I am. Why get you gone? Who is that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave her behind. What? With, Dem with Lysander? With Demetrius. 
Have a good day.